किताब नहीं है कोई अली और वली न भी पढ़े हम उसको मुसलमान कहते हैं इसलिए हम सुन्नी भाइयों के रेस्टोरेंट्स में खाना भी खाते हैं उनके हाथ का गोश्त भी इस्तेमाल करते हैं हम सब भाई भाई हैं खुदा रहा हमें आपस में फाड़ने की कोशिश न कीजिए हमारे साथ एक कॉलर है देखते हैं कौन है कि लंदन में भी इसी किस्म की चीज हुई थी और और वो वो ऐसे जैसे लंदन में तो ये मुमकिन भी नहीं होता मगर एक जगह घर का छत गिरकर वो खत्म हुआ था अल्लाह की तरफ से बड़े सख्त अजाब आते हैं इनके पास क्योंकि ये आज भी जैसा कि किसी ने कहा था कि मौला से हजरत अली सलाम से अहले बैद से आज भी उनको पुकार के देखे जवाब आएगा आज भी उनसे टकरा के देखे वो नीस तो नाबूद हो जाएगा टकराने वाला इन हम दुआ को है और इसीलिए हमारा हर तो दुआ है नबी ने फरमाया जो मोमिन के लिए हर बाज होता है वो दुआ होता है हम दुआ वो है इस वक्त के ऐसे और इसके साथ देने वाले जितने हैं अल्लाह ताला उनको मोहलिक बीमारियों में मुबतला करके इस सफाई हस्ती से जल्द अज जल्द खत्म कर दे और आपने देखा कि आज पूरी दुनिया में कोई एक मेम्बर ऐसा नहीं मिलता जहां मौला अली सलाम या औलाद अली के खिलाफ कुछ हो रहा हो और दुश्मनों के लिए हजारों मेम्बर हैं जिस पर लानत की जाती है क्योंकि उन्होंने अजियत पहुँचाई है रसूल और आल रसूल को तो ये खुद बहुत एक अल्लाह ताला का इंतजाम है इंशाल्लाह आप भी दुआ करते रहें जो आपने अभी भी किया है कि सख्त बदतरीन तरीके से ये सफ़े हस्ती से उठा लिए जाए अल्लाह साहब ने इसका हमने इस, इस सिलसिले में शाह साहब वायलेंस बिल्कुल नहीं करना जी हमारी ये नसीहत है तमाम भाई बहनों को शीयो को भी और सुनियो को भी हम इन ममालिक में इज्जत व एहतराम से रहना चाहते हैं डिग्निटी से हम इस्लाम का बाल बोल भाला करना चाहते हैं इस्लाम का अलम बुलंद करना चाहते हैं इस किस्म के लोग आएंगे किस्सा पारियाँ बन जाएंगे इनसे पहले भी आए आज को उनका नाम व निशान नहीं आज सद्दाम का कोई नाम लेने वाला नहीं जिया का कोई नाम लेने वाला नहीं यजीद का कोई नाम लेने वाला नहीं जो शीयो को जबा कराता रहा मर्द आहम बनता रहा कजाफी और वह पैसे देता रहा मुलाओं के जरिए शिया खुशी के लिए आज उसका इबरतनाक अंजाम हुआ है इनका भी इबरतनाक अंजाम होगा हमें इन शाह अपने मोहम्मद वाल मोहम्मद के रास्ते पर चलना है हमने जबान के जरिए भी वायलेंस नहीं करना हाथ के जरिए भी वायलेंस नहीं करना हम इन शाह पर दुआ करेंगे अल्लाह इनको जरीन और रसवा कर देगा अल्लाह इन इनको खार कर देगा हमारा ये टेस्ट है इन शाह हम हजरत अली की औलाद है हम हजरत अली का केस लड़ेंगे हर दुनिया की अदालत के अंदर आप घबराइए नहीं हम हजरत अली के खादि हैं ये औलाद फातिमा हैं हम औलाद अली हैं इन शाह हम अपने अबाव अजदाद का केस लड़ेंगे आप बिल्कुल घबराए नहीं मैं अभी वापस आ जाऊं न्यूयॉर्क में मैं एक बहुत बड़ी कॉन्फ्रेंस करूंगा इन और इसी टीवी चैनल को जिसका आपने नाम लिया है इसको बुलाऊंगा और वहीं से ये नशर होगी मैं वहां पर सौ क्वेश्चन करूंगा इस शख्स से अगर वो एक का भी जवाब दे दे तो मैं अपनी मौलवियत तर्क कर दूंगा मौलवियत छोड़ दूंगा मैं अभी उसको चैलेंज करता हूं कि वो जिस टीवी चैनल पे चाहे उसके पैसे मैं अपनी जेब से देने को तैयार हूं वो मेरे साथ मौला अली के उनवान पर शीयत के उनवान पर शीयत सुनी इतिहाद के उनवान पर बीबी पाक के उनवान पर हसनैन शरीफैन के उनवान पर शान रसालत के उनवान पर मुनाजरा कर ले और अगर मैं मुनाजरे में हार जाऊं तो जो सजा पूरी कौन मुन करे मैं उसके लिए तैयार हूं और अगर वो हार जाए तो ऐसे शख्स को हमेशा के लिए दफा दूर कर दिया जाए जो यहां आग लगा रहा है और शिया और सुनियों को आपस में लड़ा रहा है मुझे आफाक ख्याली साहब की कार आई है जो पाकिस्तान पोस्ट के चीफ एडिटर है उन्होंने मुझसे रिक्वेस्ट की है कि आप इस शख्स के खिलाफ आर्टिकल लिखें हमारा खून खोल गया है जब इसने मौला अली के चाहने वालों और मौला अली के खिलाफ रमजान मुबारक में ऐसी बात की अभी तो मौला अली के कफन पे ताज़ा मिट्टी पड़ी हुई है 
اور اس نے مولا علی کے خلاف یہ گفتگو کی آپ فکر نہ کریں شاہ صاحب انشاءاللہ تمام شیعہ بھائی بھی ہمارے ساتھ ہیں شیعہ بہنے بھی شیعہ کے علاوہ سنی بھائی بہنے بھی ہمارے ساتھ ہیں ہم سنی بھائی بہنوں کی خدمت شیعوں سے بھی زیادہ کر رہے ہیں آپ گھبرائے نہیں یہ مفتی یا کوئی بھی مفتی امریکہ کے اندر یا کینیڈا کے اندر اپنے مقاصد کو کبھی حاصل نہیں کر سکے گا ہم جو کانفرنس کریں گے اس میں سنی علماء کو بھی نہیں آئیں گے انشاءاللہ سنی علماء خود گواہی دیں گے کہ ہم مولا علی کے خادے میں مولا علی کے ماننے والے ہیں اور شیعوں کو ہم مسلمان سمجھتے ہیں ان کو چاہیے یہ بتائیں گے کس ملک کے ایجنٹ ہیں اور کن کے لیے کام کر رہے ہیں یہ بتائیں ہمیں الحمدللہ بتانے کی ضرورت نہیں اولاد علی موجود ہے اولاد علی ایسے دشمنان علی کا ہر مقام پہ ہر محاذ پہ انشاءاللہ مقابلہ کرے گی نہ ہم ماضی میں ہارے ہیں نہ ہم حال میں ہاریں گے نہ ہم مستقبل میں ہاریں گے ہمیں جب موت نہیں ڈرا سکتی فقر و فقہ نہیں ڈرا سکتا تعدی ظلم نہیں ڈرا سکتا ہمیں پروپگنڈا نہیں ڈرا سکتا کل غریب شام کا پروپگنڈا تھا اور آج یہ ٹی وی چینل ہے جیسے غریب شام قصہ پاری نہ بن گیا یہ انشاءاللہ الیکٹرانک چینل والے بھی قصہ پاری نہ بن جائیں گے یا یہ ایسے لوگوں کو اپنے چینل سے نکال دیں ہم ابھی وہی سلسلے کو جاری رکھتے ہوئے یہ بتلانا چاہتے ہیں کہ موخف جو تھا کہ شیعوں کا جو موخف تاریخ میں ہر وقت رہا ہے وہ نبی اور عالی نبی کا ہر وقت ساتھ دیتے رہے ہیں اور انہی سے اپنے روحانیت اور جتنا علم اور اخائط جس معاملات سب انہی سے لیتے رہے ہیں اور لینا چاہیے کیونکہ یہ حدیث تو تیہ شدہ ہے کہ انی تارکم فیکم الثقلین کتاب اللہ و عطرت اہل بیتی بلکل تیہ ہے کہ نبی نے یہی فرمایا کہ دو چیزیں چھوڑے جا رہا ہوں میں میں یا تو قرآن پاک ہے اور دوسرے جو ہے کہ وہ عطرت ہے اہل بیت علیہ السلام تو جتنا ہم بھی جتنا بھی ہم لیں گے مواد جہاں سے بھی دین لیں گے وہ آل رسول رہیں گے حسن و حسین علیہ السلام رہیں گے جو جنت کے سردار ہیں ایسی جنت کے سردار ہیں جہاں پر انبیاء علیہ السلام بھی ہیں تو جنت تو صرف ایک ہی ہے تو حضر حسین کو جنت کا سردار بنایا گیا اور یہ کہا گیا کہ ان کے والد ان دونوں سے افضل ہیں تو ہم کو لاکھ لاکھ ہم شکر ادا کرتے ہیں کہ اللہ نے ہم کو شیعہ بنایا ہے اہل بیت علیہ السلام کا نبی کا شیعہ بنایا ہے علی کا شیعہ بنایا ہے اور معصومین علیہ السلام کا شیعہ بنایا ہے ہم بڑے شکر گزار ہیں اپنے ویورز کے بہت ہمیں اپنی سیشن کی کالز آئی ہیں ہمارے پاس کیونکہ کال ویٹنگ نہیں ہے کالز دراب ہو رہی ہیں ہم آپ کے بڑے شکر گزار ہیں گیارہ بجے رات کو آج انشاءاللہ پھر یہی پروگرام ریپیٹ ہوگا اور صبح تین بجے پھر ریپیٹ ہوگا تاکہ اس کو بار بار دیکھیں اس کی ڈی ویڈی بھی بنائی جائے گی جہاں تک لانت کا تعلق ہے آئیے ہم لانت کرتے ہیں ہم لانت کرتے ہیں مباہلہ کی آیت کے مطابق کہ جو حضور علی فاطمہ حسنین کے مقابل پہ آئے ان پہ ہم لانت کرتے ہیں جن کے بارے میں کہا کہ فَوَلَّذِي نَفْسُ مُحَمَّدٍ بَيَّدِهِ لَوْ تَبَاحَلُوا لَمُوسِخُوا قِرَدَةً وَقَدَوْتِينَ اگر میرے اہل ویت سے ان سارے نجران مبالا کر لیتے تو اللہ ان کو خنزیر بنا دیتا اللہ ان کو بندر بنا دیتا ہم بندروں پہ لانت کرتے ہیں ہم خنزیروں پہ لانت کرتے ہیں امام حسین نے کہا تھا میرے جد نے بتایا تھا مجھے ایک مبروس کتہ زبا کرے گا ہم قاتل حسین پہ لانت کرتے ہیں جس کو ہم کتہ سمجھتے ہیں ہم حضور کے ممبر پہ ناچنے والے بندروں پہ لانت کرتے ہیں آئیے ہم کیوں نہ شیعہ اور سنی مل کر ام المومنین حضرت عائشہ کے قاتل کو تلاش کریں ہم اس پہ لانت کرتے ہیں جس نے بی بی عائشہ کو کنویں میں زندہ در گوپ کر دیا تھا ہم اس پہ لانت کرتے ہیں جس نے امیر المومنین حضرت علی کو قتل کرایا تھا اتفاق سے وہ ایک ہی پرسنیلٹی ہے جس نے امیر المومنین کو بھی مروایا ہے اور بی بی عائشہ کو بھی مروایا ہے اس سے اگر شیعہ سنی بھائی بہن سارے برات کر لیں تو ایسے مفتیوں کی دکانیں خود بخود بند ہو جائیں گی آخر میں دعا کرتا ہوں بارے الہا تجھے اپنی عزت و جلال کا واسطہ تجھے مقام مصطفیٰ مقام مرتضی مقام سیدہ مقام حسنین شریفین کا واسطہ ان مظلوموں کے صدقے میں ان مظلوموں کے دشمن کو تحس و نحس فرما برباد فرما اور ایسے مفتیوں کی دکانوں کو بند فرما اور ٹی وی چینلز کی اوپر ایسے سارے پروگرام بند فرما جہاں ہمارے مولا کائنات کے خلاف مزخرفات کہے جائیں یا مولا کی قوم کے خلاف بدنامی کی باتیں ہوں اللہ تعالی ہمیں بھی صبر دے ناظرین کو بھی صبر دے اب ہم انگلیش کا پروگرام فوراں شروع کر رہے ہیں بہت بہت شکریہ اب ہمارے ساتھ رہیے گا کل پھر ہم آپ کی خدمت میں پانچ بجے حاضر ہوں گے ہمارا کافلہ مکمل ہونے کو ہے 
جنہوں نے ابھی تک نام نہیں لکھوائے علامہ صاحب سے رابطہ کر لیں مجھ سے رابطہ کر لیں حسینیہ کا جو پی آف پروگرام ہے اس میں دن بدن اضافہ ہو رہا ہے مربانی فرمائیے اس میں بھی ہزار ہزار ڈالر دے کر تین سو تیرہ انسار المہدی میں شامل ہو جائیے یا جو شرکائے بدر ہیں ان میں شامل ہو جائیے اللہ کریم آپ کو سلامت رکھے ہمارا سات بجے یوت کا پروگرام بڑا کامیاب جا رہا ہے ان ورکشاپس کو بھی اٹینڈ کریں پونے آٹھ بجے مجلس ہوگی آج بھی کل بھی پرسوں بھی اور سیٹڈے کو بھی ان میں پروگرام میں شرکت فرمائیے جمعت الفضاء میں بھی شرکت کیجئے گا اللہ کریم آپ کو جزائے خیر دے بہت بہت شکریہ صبر و استقامت سے رہے اور انشاءاللہ مولا علی سے مدد مانگے اللہ تعالی مولا علی کے صدقے میں ہماری مدد کریں شکریہ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, we'd like to begin the English program today uh, with some uh, news that are very sad to start off with. And it's about the case of one person who is sitting in New York uh, on a TV channel. And he's saying that, astaghfirullah, that the Shias are not Muslims. And that those who are married to Shias in whatever manner, they should uh, divorce themselves. And this is a very sad situation for us. Because we know that anyone who recites the kalama of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a Muslim. As the Allama has referred to, Quran definitely talks about some people who wanted to call themselves Mu'min. Qalat al-Arab, Amr al And then Allah says, no, they are not Mu'min, they are Muslim. Because their kalama is la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Ali and Waliullah is a different stage. It's a stage of Iman. Because the Prophet says, Hubu Ali on Iman, the love of Ali ibn Abi Talib is Iman. So that's a, a different stage, as there are stages of Muslims. But everyone who recites the kalama, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, is a Muslim. And we obviously, as uh, we are talking about uh, the situation that's developing there, it's very sad that people are trying to split the community, split the ummah, split the Muslims into groups. And it will be very difficult to control because what is going to happen is that the Prophet of Islam Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said there are 73 sects in my community and only one would have salvation. The others could lead you towards destruction in the Akhirah and the hereafter. So we have to be careful. But the Prophet by the same token said that the Muslims are like one body. You cannot separate them out. They might have shortcomings. They might not believe fully what is right, but they are all one part of one body. If one body part of a one body is such that if one is aching or one has trouble and problem, the whole body feels, the other parts also feel with it. So we have to live like in one community, in one nation, inshallah. And these kinds of things which have come cannot split the community at all. This is the same thing that's happening in Pakistan now. The same problems. We just heard yesterday someone has been martyred. The killings have been going on unabated for years now and they call themselves Muslims they say we pray also what is the use of the prayer when after right after the prayer someone goes to take the life of another person Allah says very clearly that whoever kills someone intentionally that the Jahannam is there for them definitely they cannot enter paradise we have to be careful when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the people the kuffar and mushrikeen even have, they have been given a right to live in this world. We have no right to cut it off. All the Muslims are allowed to live in the world, no matter what their difference in faith is. Every Muslim has a right to live on the face of the earth. We cannot control it. We cannot decide who is going to live and die. Then what is the use of the day of judgment if we keep on deciding who is going to be alive and who is not? So that, and even at the time of the Prophet wasallam, in this holy month, when the people were going for Fatah Makkah and it was about the 10th of the holy month and they were leaving and after they went from a distance from Medina the Prophet asked that we should open our fast because there is no fast during travel but some of the companions this is very important to understand some of the companions openly said no we would not we would not break the fast the Prophet said this is against the Sharia but history records, they were not killed. They were not punished even for that. Very good. It's very important to realize. When at Sulaih, Hudaybiyah, the treaty of Hudaybiyah was going on, some of the Muslims came 
and they doubted. They doubted the prophethood of the prophet. One person was very specific. He says, I have doubt whether you are a prophet. And even to that person, the prophet did not kill. So even the prophet allows a doubt in his prophethood. Is not wajibul khatam. How can these people say that those who believe in the Prophet of Islam just because they don't follow whatever their intentions are, whatever their meanings of the Quran are, they can be, you know, killed and removed from the face of the earth. It's a very uh, sad situation that is there in the Mumlakat Qudada of Pakistan. You know, it's, it was very difficult for Pakistan to, to have been born from India. It was very difficult. It was Muhammad Ali Jinnah and the other people he was, also Shia. And he was a Shia and they struggled hard and they gave us a place you know for the Muslims separate from the persecution that they would have after the independence lot of people were killed between India and Pakistan so and the intention obviously of some of the people was that they are you know a place exclusively for Hindus who dwell up and that's where they felt it and they developed Pakistan separately and they were successful and their success was not based on them itself it was as they say it was divine help that caused it and now it's the responsibility of the Muslims to keep it in such a way for years and years there was no problem between Shias and Sunnis in Pakistan we never had any difficulties they were all mixed families all over the place if you look at the history the same person who is saying that the, Muslim, that the Shias are kafir, he should realize that maybe in his own family there are people who are married to Shias. Maybe he is from, maybe it is, maybe from the uh, marriage of Shia and Sunni, who knows, a few generations before. This has been going on for generations. There had never been a prof problem. If you look into the history, history of Abdullah ibn Umar, who, is he, who was he married to, Hazrat Mukhtar, Yes. How, who was he married to? Sister of Sisters. Yeah. It's Sister. amazing. It's amazing how these things were developing from that point of time. Because everyone tried to reduce the frictions rather than to increase them. And these people, as they say, without little knowledge. Imam Ali yes. married the widow of Abu Bakr. Imam Ali married the widow of Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr's son, yeah. Muhammad. And he adapted. Ali's, adap adapted the son yeah. of Abu Bakr. Yeah. And he says he's like my son. Yeah. And who, it's unfortunate, was killed by the Muslims. Yeah. In Egypt, Muhammad ibn Abu Bakr was killed by the Muslims. Yes. Supposed to be very good, close to the Prophet of Islam. They killed him. They killed the son of uh, the first Khalif, Abu Bakr. So you look at history and you'll find out that this has been going on for years. And how could that be that Imam Hassan al-Islam was poisoned by someone, by a wife, Jada bin Ashraf. So obviously Jada was not a follower of the ideology of Imam Hassan alayhi salatu wasalam, but she was obviously a Muslim because she recited the Kalama. This has been going on for years. Umm Habiba, the wife of Prophet. Yes, Umm Habiba was the daughter of Abu Sufyan. Daughter of Abu Sufyan. First enemy. Worst enemy of the Prophet. But and even Umm Habiba, when, the, when uh, Abu Sufyan came to the house, he wanted to sit on the place where the Prophet's Bed was, right. she says, no, you cannot sit because you are a Najis. Yes. So, and that shocked Abu Sufyan. He says, these women who we can bury alive at that time, as such, Islam has given them so much power that they speak the truth. And that's what the Muslims need to do today, to speak the truth. They should not care whether this person is a sheikh, whether this person is a relative of theirs. And because the Quran says, even the relatives and the father and the, and the brothers, if they are against the deen, you have a right to speak against them. And we are coming to this stage and we know that Islam, Alhamdulillah, is expanding. Here every day we see, we hear of people uh, coming to the faith of Nabi and Ali Nabi and Ali Muhammad alayhi wasalam. And these elements are being used. These evil elements are being used now to cause friction amongst the Muslims. And you see, we have to be very careful. And those days are over now when they used to call even the, the parents of the Prophet وسلم, they had doubts in their Iman. They had doubts in the Iman of Abu Talib wasalam. We are thankful for so many newspapers in Canada and in America. They are calling Abu Talib wasalam. Big changes come. They are printing Lot of people. Imam Ali. Imam Ali wasalam, the news recently that was printed about a big 
procession that we had here in Toronto was amazing. And this shows their respect of the Sunni and Ahl al-Sunnah towards Ahl al-Bayt There is no difference at all. We are talking about a minuscule group of people who do not have faith in Islam, but they want to give the impression that they are followers and Surat al-Munafiqun was revealed for these people itself. And we have to be careful that Surat al-Munafiqun about hypocrites was revealed for those in the holy city of Medina. Maradu al nifaq Quran says about them that they are in Medina. And in, the, in those people, in, and interestingly for the youngsters, you have to know this fact that there is a masjid darar, there is a masjid which was developed and erected and constructed in Medina at the time of the Prophet by the Muslims, quote unquote companions, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked the Prophet, La taqafiyah, do not even stand, do not pray in the masjid, that masjid is not worth going to. This is the masjid constructed in Medina at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you have to realize that these masajid, we talk about splitting the Shia Sunni, could be treated at the level of Masjid Zara. That you should not even stand there. If any masjid says that Yazid or the killers of Ali ibn Abi Talib are the ones on whom Allah sent blessing, that masjid is not worth standing and going there. That is not a masjid. So Allah has given these examples for us forever. Why do I need to know that there was a masjid in Medina and who constructed it and what happened to it? Allah wants that to be not asatir al not just the stories, but something that we should follow and may Allah give us the strength to speak the truth. And inshallah, we'll continue this. This is a very interesting program. Inshallah, we'll keep on doing that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us on the path of haq, the path of Sirat al Mustaqim, the path of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the Quran and Ahl al Bayt alayhi wa sallatu wa sallam. May Allah keep us on the path of Anbiya alayhi wa sallatu wa sallam. All the Anbiya we should remember. That Allah says, in our prayers, we should remember them. And we should follow the stories of the Holy Quran. May Allah give us strength to understand the Holy Quran, to do tadabur and tafakkur in the Quran, to do to ponder in the ayats of the Holy Quran rather than just reading it. May Allah give us the strength for the youngsters to understand the truth about our Islam. May Allah destroy those who want to split the communities of Muslim communities all over the world, not just in Toronto or New York or Pakistan, but everywhere in Hijaz, in Bahrain, in Iraq. And, and you know in Syria now we see the problem happening. The same people they want to destroy the places of the Ahl al-Bayt and the mausoleums of Ahl al-Bayt may Allah destroy them before even they think about it inshallah. May Allah guide us on the path, the path of Nabi and Ali Nabi and definitely as the Prophet has said May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among the Shias of Ali ibn Abi Talib wasalam, so that we are successful, so that we are sitting on Manabar on the pulpits of Noor and amongst those who enter with the Prophet in Jannah as the Shias of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad wasalam, Ya Allah give us the strength to speak the truth and to follow the truth and to accept the truth and keep us away from bidat of any kind, innovations of any kind and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give shifa and health to those who are suffering, all the Muslims and Mu'mineen all over the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant long life to the ulama who are serving the deen and destroy those who are just destroying the deen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring those people who are there in their graves, bring the doors of Jannah, open that to them and make their barzakh, inshallah, which is the topic tonight, inshallah. At 7 o'clock, inshallah, we are starting on Husaynia.com. The barza, what happens in the purgatory period between now and Qiyamah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the barza easy for our relatives and all the Muslims that have gone before, especially the shohada in Pakistan who have been killed on a regular basis. May Allah stop the killing and destroy those who are trying to hurt the Muslims in any part of the world. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad